A report in the British Daily, The Guardian, has claimed that unknown gunmen have carried out 20 killings in Pakistan since 2020. Quoting unnamed intelligence officials of India and Pakistan, the report says, RNAW carried out the assassinations of people charged with serious and violent terror offences in India. Now, this report comes after Canada said that they had credible allegations that India was involved in the murder of dissident figure Hardeep Singh Nijar and the US asked India to investigate on the assassination attempt on Gurpatwan Singh Pannun. Now, Indian officials have called this media report false and malicious anti-India propaganda. So, who are the unknown gunmen and why are anti-Indian terrorists being killed in Pakistan? And will this make Pakistan finally accept that it's harboring anti-India terrorists? Joining me to discuss this Pakistan's true lies are Yashovadar Nazad, Dr. Ajay Sani, and my colleague Aditya Rajkol. Gentlemen, welcome to the News 9 Plus show. Mr. Azad, I want to start by asking you, who are these masked men who are killing people in Pakistan? 20 killings in the last two or three years, all people wanted by India. Well, we are not privy to the, uh, uh, the actual information as to who has done it. But of course, it's a very happy and welcome news for us. Uh, because all these uh, terrorists or murderers were named uh, yes. uh, for terrorist acts in India. Yeah. And uh, somehow, I mean, justice is being delivered. Uh, you know, it's, it's a little ironical that the Western nations are, are, are questioning India for its uh, rising muscle. Uh, right. <laughs> because they are known to have done extrajudicial killings uh, out abroad. Yes. And America, of course, it officially by, by you know, striking down uh, uh, with, Durans, uh, with drones, uh, whether in Afghanistan or Syria right. or, or other places like Iraq. Uh, I can also add another thing here that uh, uh, some of these uh, terrorists, of course, have outlived their use. Uh, maybe some of them are being, uh, uh, you know, obliterated by the ISI itself. Right. But it's... It, it's a very interesting uh, phenomena that the ISI does not know whether to make it public, yes. admitting its failure, or to right. just keep quiet about it and carry on. Right, absolutely. Dr. Sani, you've been quoted in this Guardian report where you've noted, of course, SATP tracks. Uh, it's the only data, you know, uh, database of its kind in South Asia. You noted the spike in killings in Pakistan in the last couple of years. Uh, who do you think is behind this? And do you think that uh, the Pakistan state, as Mr. Azad mentioned, is in a catch-22 situation here. Who's behind this? We have absolutely, absolutely no evidence uh, in the public domain, which right. is what we are familiar with. Yes. So you can attribute it to whoever you like, yes. uh, depending on your ideological proclivities. You can right. either attribute it to rising Indian state or you can yes. attribute it. To a, a number of killings have occurred of this nature where there is at least tentative attribution or acknowledgement right. that this was a gang war, uh, killing in a gang war, or yes. this was a killing in... Uh, and the numbers are much larger, by the way. It's uh, right. already 22 of uh, these specific ones. Yes. But there are another 8 or 10 killings where uh, some attribution has been made, a couple of them, to Sindhu Desh uh, 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 independence movements, uh, right. Uh, right. some to ga gang wars. So, as far as that is concerned, I think we have... In any case, including the Canada US case, yes, yet to see evidence. Right. Number two, as far as the Guardian story is concerned, I had only noticed that there has been a very dramatic uh, escalation after 2023. Right. We had one incident in 2020. We had one incident in 2022. Right. Uh, after that, we've had at least 16 incidents in uh, uh, 2023. I say at least because there are other dubious incidents right. as right. well, and at least four already. Yes. In 2020. Right. We, we are seeing uh, 20 incidents in just these uh, two years, uh, right. one, one, in, one in four months or, or less than four, three, three odd months. So uh, now, as far as even the American and the Canadian case is concerned, right. we are yet to see any evidence. Right. Absolutely. Only the perpetrators have not been uh, identified or caught. Yes. The United States has certain evidence. It is still to uh, stand the scrutiny of the uh, courts. The extradition they have sought has still not occurred. Right. So we don't know where that's going. Yes. But frankly, you must also understand that when uh, when uh, uh, the Guardian probably very rightly attributes its information to certain intelligence uh, operatives uh, right. uh, currently in service, yes. uh, that may be the case. They may have right. done the due diligence. 
but just because claims are made yes by serving officers does not mean that those are not false claims it is right. the job of agents to project a certain image absolutely it's a job of uh, agencies to so project certain image so we have no idea who done we have no idea you know aditya the mad magazine which shut down in the us uh, many <laughs> years back they ran a series on uh, you know strange inventions and one of those inventions was bladeless knives without handles <laughs> <laughs> and this is what we were discussing when canada said credible allegations yeah. so you think this is more bladeless knives without handles as uh, dr sani mentioned no evidence and given the fact that there are 125 terror outfits in pakistan as per indian uh, india's uh, uh, statements uh, who's to tell who's killing these guys I and mean, that there, there must be at any given point of time at least 50 or 60 terrorist groups active shooting and who's to identify who's killing whom you know sandeep i went through this extensive uh, report or sh- should we call it an essay yes because uh, the one thing that i noticed during the course of reading this entire essay yeah. uh, by three reporters in india and pakistan right was that there's not a shred of evidence right. there's one no witness that has been mentioned yes. there's no report that has right. been quoted and there are no photographic uh, evidences or any digital communication yes. that they refer to they only refer to their so called sources yes. in indian intelligence and pakistani intelligence right. now who would verify that yes. i have done several such reports mm. uh, but it is for the public to actually assume whether yes. these are true or false right. secondly what i will mention is that i was in fact the first journalist to cover the killing of zahur mistri yes uh, and i had spoken to both intelligence officials in india and pakistan we in fact made a documentary out you of it you broke that story yeah, i remember we, yes we, we had that documentary yeah. killing of an hijacker yes now one thing that you need to note and i completely agree with mr azad when he yes. says that not some but i would go on to extend say most of these terrorists yes. have outlived their uh, use right. because some have been given a d- different role you yes. know zahur mistri was a carpenter right. uh, in karachi they are all Sim- living in deep cover as Sim- your documentary similarly there was a, a terrorist yes. from 1990s who was very active for 5 to 10 years right. but now was a vice chancellor of a university yes. so similarly there are several other examples where and i if you know i would if you would ask me who is behind this right. i certainly won't believe that this is rnaw right. but i would say this is isi yes. because this is pakistan who actually wants to kill and wants to show to the west particularly yes. the us right. that they are acting against terror and especially at a time when there has been economic pressure on them this pressure from us yes. and of course this uh, pressure on the other side of the afghan taliban and the ttp right. they want to be seen as acting against terror to actually get in more funds more defense equipment right. and more sympathy wave right. uh, from us and other uh, countries is that is that a credible uh, uh, line of thinking uh, mr azad the fact that the isi is actually uh, tying up loose ends as aditya said that they are you know getting rid of these guys who outlet their utility well i can say this much that i say is a real quandary right now yes uh serious situation is that uh, it's well known that these people are getting hit and i say does not know whether to acknowledge it publicly or not or to blame india right uh, for his rising cloud in be able to hit outside you know the other thing i want to uh, comment on is the uh, you know death of nijar Right. and uh, in one of the papers whether it was the guardian or the washington post itself they had mentioned what a shoddy investigation has been done in the case of uh, nature that in fact uh, the people around that area also were not even questioned right. to to you know, uh, make allegations even uh, without a proper uh, investigation and as right. an ex cop i can tell you that this kind of a hit Yes. Uh, would require very detailed in depth kind of investigation right. and then only you you get some kind of credible leads i'm saying leads yes. not accusations so in that respect i would say that uh, uh, suppose you know we are not privy to any official information but if this has happened i mean i would welcome it if if uh, you know uh, the murderers uh, of a particular country who commit murders yes. outside and getting hit inside their remote country there couldn't be better justice than this and right. and i would certainly welcome it as far as the isi is concerned i'm sure the isi is trying to now prepare some kind of with this new government coming in is trying to prepare some kind of a reaction as to what is going to do further on the borders and mind you you know terrorists have a very short shelf life so the same terrorists cannot be used for on and on right. therefore yes uh, some of their shelf lives are over they had to be you know gotten out of the system and the new ones have to be prepared so it's a kind of a you know regenerating uh, they would be back at their task 
very soon. Right, absolutely. And Dr. Sani, this uh, point about, uh, you know, Pakistan making these claims, it's been making it at the highest levels at the UN, it's been raising it uh, very recently. The Pakistan foreign minister made precisely these claims in January to say that Indian agents are behind these uh, killings. Do you see this as a Pakistan having a credibility problem when it comes to making such sensational claims that no one really believes them anymore? given the kind of double games that they've been playing uh, over the years, you know, hunting with the hares and, uh, you know, running with the hounds. Yeah, Pakistan has a very, very serious credibility problem across the board. Please understand that they have historically had this uh, 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 tendency to go into retaliatory ac accusations. Yes. If India said Pakistan is uh, engaged in terrorism on Indian soil and there was so much there was overwhelming evidence, international evidence of such uh, activities. They immediately come back and say, no, 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 but India is also involved uh, 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 in terrorist activities. Yes, what about uh, in Pakistan. Yes, yes. Uh, what about me? So now, obviously, in the, after the Nijjar uh, 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 allegations by, at the highest level by Canada, by the Prime Minister coming out in, in, in uh, Parliament over there, uh, they will have uh, seen this as an opportunity. Right. They will defend it and they will exploit it to it to the hilt. Yes. Uh, also, you've got, had these trends, and I, I'd like to add uh, to something that uh, Mr. Azad also said. And uh, name one leader of worth. Right. I mean, if you are sitting here at the RNAW planning assassinations, would this third line, you know, or uh, 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 superannuated uh, terrorist be your primary target? Right. Right. You're going to hit someone. You would obviously hit someone who was seen as an active mobilizer, yes. a current terrorist leader. If you're going to take the, uh, you know, uh, shall we say, uh, uh, global uh, sort of fire that you are right. potentially to uh, 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 sort of uh, uh, attract, uh, you would certainly see that the uh, cost in terms of credibility, in terms of, yes. uh, you know, uh, perce global perception, would be in some say way compensated by the uh, nature of the target. Yes. Why are you going across? Okay, one name which is prominent, Paramjit Singh Panjwar comes up. Yeah. Paramjit Singh Panjwar is a has been uh, who was operate uh, active in the uh, 90s, uh, early 90s, 80s, uh, early 90s. Why would uh, you know you expend major resources and then this cannot be done by uh, just. Uh, uh, you know, bribing some petty lower level uh, criminal. This will right. have to be done through networks. Yes. So, uh, why would you uh, target uh, someone who is no longer a significant threat? Also, right. I'd like to add one small thing. Uh, apart from the fact that the ISI could have an inter uh, interest in sort of uh, uh, culling these uh, individuals now, yes. uh, you must also understand that most of these individuals are involved in a range of yes. domestic activities. Absolutely. Including uh, uh, gun running, uh, 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 narcotics uh, smuggling, uh, elements of that nature. Now right. these activities automatically create gang rivalries, groups, uh, groupings, and there would be obvious uh, uh, possibilities of uh, these activities resulting in these uh, uh, hits across uh, groups. None of this, as yet, uh, says that we can definitely point to India. The other very, very crucial thing is, we are talking about at least 22 and up to 28, 29 uh, uh, such cases, including the dubious cases. When we say that the Indian agency is involved, are we saying are they, they, are, they are involved in one of these 28, 29 cases? Or in 28, 29 of these uh, cases? You know, what are we, what is the allegation? And in hard terms, that two of these entire group of uh, killings have occurred with some kind of Indian involvement or that a majority of these are by the Indian uh, agencies or that all of these are by the Indian agencies. This, this right. is a, you know, if you are to approach this and I have no problem of this being approached as a line of investigation. Yes. If my enemy has died, I am, should be questioned. But to go beyond this on the basis of no evidence and on the basis of yes. uh, statements by Indian intelligence, alleg right. allegedly, uh, I mean, uh, attributed to Indian intelligence or to Pakistani intelligence, both groups may be, will be speaking from their own perceived uh, current interests. Absolutely. In fact, Aditya, this point about uh, the evidence, I mean, that 
the fact that these reports have come out without a shred of evidence and whatever has been presented in the past by Pakistan, uh, little evidence that the foreign minister of Pakistan presented has been rubbished by India. But the government is of course denied that any of this has happened. They've said it is not government policy. But you know the timing of these revelations uh, or so-called accusations by, by the Guardian, you think the government is, would actually take it up politically? It gives the government a plank. You think you see any of that happening? You know, on a lighter note, this couldn't have come at a better time for the Modi <laughs> government because, you know, yesterday I was browsing through social media yeah. and the only thing that the BJP supporters or the right wing was really doing right. was celebrating, uh, was saying that this actually vindicates our stand right. of going after terrorists and actually Wherever doing they be, the Israel model. Wherever they be, the Israel model yes. and whatever US has been claiming all these years, right. they went into Abu Tabad and killed yes. Osama bin Laden. So right. we have done not one but 20. That's what the claim is. Right. So I think Mo Modi government or their supporters will go door to door, right. will campaign for this. And yes. this Guardian uh, article is already uh, in several video publicity materials, etc. in right. the last 24 hours, right. claiming that this is what Modi government stands for. Absolutely. So politically, this is going to help the government. Right. Of course, uh, you know, there is an, in I, my personal belief yes. is that this article is from an intelligence agency. I right. won't name the country. Right. Uh, you know, it's anybody's guess. Uh, comes at a time when, you know, this uh, Five Eyes Alliance yes. has been going after India on the uh, Nijjar case right. and of course on the Pannu case as well from the United States. So right. one can imagine which global intelligence agency is uh, behind this article because it's a very smartly crafty little article yes. without a shred of evidence but creates uh, a, a another level of narrative yes. uh, against India. Absolutely, another level of uh, narrative against India and while I mean, we've denied any such involvement or any the fact that it's not state policy. Uh, Mr. Azad, we know which country has made it its state policy to kill people, individuals, in uh, wherever they may be in the world. And 5,000 militants have been killed, uh, Al-Qaeda, you know, uh, Taliban, TTP, by the United States in drone strikes from 2004 for about 15 years since then. Is there a kind of a double standards when it comes to terrorists who threaten US interests vis-a-vis terrorists who threaten Indian interests? And we've seen this dichotomy in the 2611 investigation as well, where none other than the NSA that at that time, Mr. Narayanan said that the US sat on intelligence uh, about the attacks, where they gave us some alerts, they didn't give us the whole picture. Do you see these double standards at play over here? Yes, I said right in the beginning that the Western nations who are responsible for so many extrajudicial killings outside the country right. are the ones who question, uh, you know, somebody like India, basically yes. because of its rising cloud. But, you know, I, I think, Sandeep, we should not, uh, you know, go uh, gung-ho about uh, the killings in uh, uh, Pakistan. Uh, we should just take it as another, you know, a matter of another day in office. Right. Uh, right. Because the, these have become very small things for us. Yes. You know, Pak is no longer a threat. Uh, right. You know, absolutely. Either is the Khalistani threat of any consequence. Yes. yes. Let them you know, fight over Gurdwaras in Canada and all these places. Right. It doesn't right. matter. Right. The thing also, Sandeep, which is important, is mind you, this incident about Pannu will never make any dent in our relations with uh, with the uh, U.S. Yeah, because you know, yeah. you has had a lot of interest in India and right now we have a strategic partnership yes. because we have an enemy. Right. So, you know, in, in terms of, of the state policy, in terms of strategic interest, they ride over these, uh, these you know, uh, small issues. Absolutely. So, I would say, yes, U.S. always says my terrorist is, is uh, a real terrorist. And your terrorists, oh, there could be problems with social poverty and things like that. Right. So anyway, that, that side, I think uh, already it's giving a very good impression what is happening in Pakistan, though they are not of much interest. Right. But of course, if you want to hit like US, then right. I would expect somebody like Dawood Ibrahim to be hit. That okay. would be a real hit, I would say. Absolutely. Dawood Ibrahim there. And uh, very well summed up, uh, uh, Mr. Azad, the fact that we shouldn't take, you know, too much of mind space <laughs> with these allegations, the fact that uh, this seems to be a retread of 90s and you know early 2000s uh, film scripts. But uh, Dr. Sani, closing comments here, do you think that any of this is going to make any difference to our 
Pakistan policy or our relations with the United States, with all that's going on, that Aditya mentioned, Mr. Azad mentioned, Pannun, all of these little, little, uh, you know, triggers, the uh, killing of Niger, Pannun, these uh, so-called hits by masked men in Pakistan, or is this relationship absolutely on course and we have to, you know, uh, go with the flow? As far as Pakistan is concerned, I think we've got a history of extreme uh, violations uh, by them for decades. Yes. And we have at least a certain number of uh, uh, our uh, actions against them, uh, which have made no real difference to the trajectory. Right. The trajectory is based on an enduring intent uh, right. on the part of Pakistan and a shift in adaptive strategies on the part of India. Uh, and that will continue. Uh, as far as America is concerned, I agree with Mr. Azad that our uh, relationship uh, is, is uh, uh, at this juncture very deep and they are strategic, uh, shared strategic uh, objectives and interests, uh, which will not allow an incident or an allegation of this nature, the Pannu allegation, to make a very significant difference. Uh, Canada, however, is a very different case. Uh, we have seen under Trudeau a very dramatic shift in relationship, a very dramatic undermining uh, despite some uh, rollback by uh, Canada. Uh, I don't think that is an enduring uh, uh, sort of uh, trend. Uh, it is uh, uh, presumably after Trudeau is, uh, uh, ends his tenure, which should not be uh, very long in the uh, future. Uh, uh, relationships will be restored to status quo ante. So right. I don't think any of these relationships uh, is going to have uh, a, a change at a strategic level right. uh, as a result. None of these relationships are going to strike. All perceptions. Yes. Closing comments, Aditya, on this. Well, I uh, completely agree with Mr. Sahani, yes. his analysis that, you know, the status quo in the relationship or the relationship between India and US will remain yes. so and Pakistan, we know how right. it has happened. You know, the problem here is that the West, particularly yes. the US, hmm. wants India and the global South to see democracy, counter-terrorism, terrorism right. from their own prism. Right. And the right. problem begins when India stands up. Yes. I'm not calling them a bully right. like China, right. but it has been so, you know, right. you know, how the US sees the world democracy yes. is something that the global south should abide by. Right. Now, when India rises and right. challenges this myth, yes. challenges and says that there needs to be a global consensus, right. we need to be heard. Right. Our counter-terrorism is as important as yours. Yes. That's where the problem begins and I'm sure that India is not going to look back now and really march ahead. Yeah, India is not going to look back now, despite all these allegations. And thank you very much, uh, Mr. Azad, Dr. Sani, and my colleague Aditya, for talking about Pakistan's true lies, a script that's playing out over the last couple of months and has gotten new impetus from the Guardian news report denied by the government of India. It's Nyai versus Guarantee. The Congress party launched its manifesto for the 2024 general elections this morning. They call it the Nyai Patra. The party is promised to focus on five Nyais, the five pillars of justice for youth, women, farmers, labourers and proportional representation in government institutions. Now, the first Prime Minister, Jawaharlal Nehru, used to keep on his table four lines from Robert Frost's poem, Stopping by the Woods. One line from that is, but I have promises to keep. Now, the Congress is in power in three states, in Himachal Pradesh, Karnataka and Telangana. Except for Karnataka in two other states, most of their promises are yet to be implemented. Now, contrast this with Modi ki guarantee. That's the main campaign theme as Prime Minister Modi seeks a third term. This highlights the promises kept by the Prime Minister for the youth, for women empowerment and those marginalised and ignored for decades. Another Congress Prime Minister, Rajiv Gandhi used to say that for every rupee targeted towards welfare and poverty, just 15 paise reach the intended beneficiaries. Now, the question we are asking is, when it comes to power, how will the Congress party implement their promises, the manifesto promises, especially since the BJP and Prime Minister Modi have ensured that a large percentage of their schemes have reached their beneficiaries directly. Now, joining me to discuss this this evening are Shikha Mukherjee, and my colleague, Brijesh Pandey. Uh, Shikha, welcome to the News 9 Plus show. And Brijesh. Thank you. What's your takeaway from the uh, Congress manifesto released this morning? Um, I think, well, actually, let me start with the last bit of the Congress manifesto. Right. It quotes to go on where the mind is without fear. Right. 
Um, and I think that that about sums up what the Congress guarantees are all about, what the summers, Congress Nyai Patra is all about. Because as Rahul Gandhi in his press conference pointed out, yes. this was about defending the Constitution right. and restoring democracy. Right. Therefore, if you look at the, the elements within the manifesto, am I surprised uh, that the, the, there are these five Nyai uh, pillars and the 25 guarantees that have been laid out? No, I'm not, because this has been something that was talked right, uh, right through the second um, yatra, Bharat Joro right. yatra that Rahul Gandhi uh, undertook. <clears throat> so, you know, the, the Nai itself uh, is interesting, but what is missing from this Nai is the universal uh, income scheme that he had promised Absolutely. in 19. Right. In other words, the Congress has shifted right. its focus from something like a universal income uh, direct transfer to certain segments of the population. And today it is talking about the different ways in which it is going to address the issues, where it thinks that uh, Modi government has failed over the last 10 years, right. one, and B, promises that are consistent with the Congress's performance between 2004 and 2014. And I'll, I'll take you through some of those because, you know, where, where you have uh, specific guarantees on food security, right. on jobs, jobs, on um, on bringing the kind of uh, change that, uh, you know, on, on, on environmental justice, on uh, sort of changing the laws. I think you're getting, you're, what you're getting to see is a less vague uh, manifesto from 2019 and a sharper focus on what they call the ground realities right. and in components with uh, the 1951-52 um, first manifesto which was what does the Congress stand for. Right. I think it's very interesting actually that uh, the Congress manifesto of 2024 is invoking an idea which is uh, probably back in 1951, which is what does the Congress stand for? And according to the manifesto, what the Congress stands for is social, economic uh, justice. It also stands for um, a lot more in the sense that it wants to dismantle, for instance, decriminalizing defamation. It wants to change the ways in which uh, bail is given. It wants to increase... I'm, I'm just cherry-picking because there's just right. so many deep... Right. Like, uh, Shika, I'm just going to bring in a Brijesh on this now. Uh, Brijesh, yeah, sure. is the Congress going back to its roots, as Shika mentioned, 51? Why did they drop the UBI, which was such a central plank to I, th 2019? I think they I think they are. And, you know, one interesting bit is, that, you know, they mentioned also uh, mentioned about the social economic equality and also the caste census. Yes. They said that once they come to power, they will do it. And not right. only do, do it, yeah. they will also have a look at the 50% cap, which is there by yes. uh, the Constitution. They'll, so yes. I think it's, it's a very uh, bold statement which has been made. And it right. is in consonance with uh, the kind of uh, language, you know, Rahul Gandhi has been make, uh, using for a very long time. And social justice. Uh, social justice yes. and also, you know, jiski jitte hisse daari, uski right. utani bhaage daari. So right. talking about, you know, that uh, that OBCs, if they are the, they have the 60% of or 70% of the entire, uh, you know, population, right. then why can't they get uh, an equal amount of representation? Right. And remember, it's a, it's a very interesting take because uh, the first time uh, this started from Bihar, you know, it right. started by Nitish Kumar and it had BJP in a, in a, in a spot of bother because right. initially they said that, no, no, we are not going to go ahead with this. This is, uh, this is, uh, this, this can't be implemented. And within, you know, days they did a 180 degree U-turn and said that, no, no, we are also all for this. And right. uh, it's another story that Nitish Kumar joined Bharti Janta Party post that. But that's, that's, that's one issue which, which did rattle uh, the Bharti Janta Party. It'll be very right. interesting to see how they, go about it. A lot of yes. focus is on women related scheme, right. you know, Mahalakshmi scheme where one lakh rupee will be given to them, uh, you know, with not many two ma nitpicking. Yes. And also uh, the fact that, you know, that uh, the good thing is that the OPS did not, does not find uh, much mention yes, uh, uh, because, sure. you know, economically <laughs> ruinous and all. Absolutely. But one more thing, which, yes. which kind of sums up what, you know, what the Congress party has been saying out that under their government, minorities will have freedom to practice, to wear, right. to eat, 
speak their mind and it, they'll not be clamped down. It's a it's a direct hit out at the at right. the central government. At, uh, yeah, exactly. But uh, Shika, why is the BJP taking its time over the manifesto? There, there, there's just been two uh, sittings <laughs> of the manifesto committee. Is this just a thing that they need to, uh, you know, they're doing it for the sake of doing it or? 2019, the BJP released the uh, manifesto, if, uh, if not on the day of the election started, right. then perhaps one day before that, 24 hours before that. Right. Therefore, the BJP, I think, takes it for granted yes. that it does not need a formal manifesto to right. reach the people or its karyakartas or uh, even journalists. Yes. He thinks that, that Mr. Modi's message yes. is powerful enough to cover the uh, absence of a manifesto released on time for people to pursue right, it. Right. Uh, so I don't know whether it's complacency or not, but certainly it is. Uh, it stinks of arrogance, if I may say so. <laughs> complacency <laughs> or arrogance, Bridget? I, I would say that, you know, uh, uh, guarantee. B BJP realized back in 2013 that the yes. catalyst which will improve their performance is Prime Minister Narendra Modi. Yes. And if you look at the rallies which and, and the and, and the you know uh, rallies which the Prime Minister have been addressing yes. for the last one and a half even two before months, elections even before power. election yeah. even before the formal announcement of manifesto right. they have already put what the main points or themes yes. of manifesto is going to be already out two months right. back when right. they have talk, started talking about Modi ki guarantee. Yes. And the Prime Minister so says fact, it is it is Modi ki guarantee and nobody else can we make it. We had discussed it on a show like this a few months back last year. Exactly. We that asked whether this Modi ki guarantee is actually going to be the poll Ex exactly. call. So, so, so it's, not like, exactly it's, not like, it's not like uh, you know it's arrogance I would say right. that they are prepared they know that you know that unlike Congress which is out of power facing yes. a lot of defection not in the best of uh, political health. Right. Uh, BJP on the other side is is you know 100 percent ready to take on uh, Congress right. and other ally partner in 2024. Absolutely. So the Prime Minister has already put in action hmm. what the manifesto is going to be saying on the day on the X day or whichever day they right. decide to release it. So, so they're not dependent on Modi the manifesto. Modi is the manifesto. Modi is the manifesto. <laughs> Absolutely. So which is why and the Congress of course making a very bold uh, statement there uh, on its social justice plank promising to revise the 50 percent reservation cap and of course bringing in a whole lot of uh, what we are calling freebies that they are offering the people the one lakh of family uh, 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 minimum uh, income uh, uh, British what do you call it one lakh every year every for year. every family below every poverty family. line yeah. the Mahalakshmi scheme they are taking yeah. that to uh, they are going to town with that uh, it will remain to be seen which of these two guarantees get picked up by the people but thank you very much uh, Shika for uh, joining us and my colleague Brijesh Thanks. on promise versus delivery he's a national award winner he's called the stylish star and bunny by his fans his films are a box office rage but his impact goes beyond the screen he's called a youth icon his style his dialogue delivery and on-screen persona resonate with the younger generation he influences trends in fashion dance and even lifestyle choices now, as he readies to release the trailer of Pushpa the Rule on his birthday on the 8th of April, we talk about the magic of Allu Arjun. And joining me to discuss this are Girish Vankhade, Saurabh Verma and my colleague Geeta. Uh, Saurabh, what explains the phenomenal popularity of Allu Arjun? You know, back in the day we used to think of South Indian stars being confined to their you know, geographical regions and today you have someone like Allu Arjun who's literally broken out of the south and he's a nationwide star uh, with Pushpa. So in my mind, uh, every every country, every film has a kind of a Masi star. Right. A star who's acknowledged not just by the uh, metropolitan cities but also with the auto rickshaw walas and all yes. the masses and right. everybody. I think uh, Allu Arjun has crossed that line where He's acknowledged by the people who come to the multiplexes, but also right. love to go to cinemas. Mm. And I think that's also thanks to the pandemic where people have consumed all his films on the YouTube yes. and everything and everything. Yes. And he's got a certain energy which is which brings in an extreme uh, different USP which no other actor has. So I think that's one of the reasons why the uh, Alu Arjun is such a big star. He's right, right now called the iconic star. Yes. And there's nobody else matching that energy. The iconic star, no one else matching that energy. But Girish, you know, like we were discussing earlier on Gita, the, in the old days, uh, you know, uh, 
southern stars had to actually come to bollywood to be recognized you had to have a, you know rajnikanth who had to make that catch that flight from chennai and come and land in mumbai kamla hasan had to do the same thing and today you have alu arjun who's sitting there in his house in hyderabad shooting movies and we can't wait to see a trailer of his film i mean that's the kind of anticipation he's built up with pushpa to what explains his phenomenal popularity how did he become number one hero number one yeah it is all because of, uh, of the penetration of television channels in fact as saurabh has said during the pandemic also people have consumed so much of yes. uh, south indian film and that was all because of uh, the prime tv channels which were showcasing the dubbed version of this yes, yes. then the ott was the second uh, second vertical where there was a lot of promotion of these films right. and the third is the massive success of these films when right. you see pushpa one it has all the elements of our old timers uh, and old masala pot boy yes. films of hindi which yes. whereas the hindi film industry was more going towards art house cinema yes. and more on realism multiplex cinema they were talking about larger than life experience yes. so such thing which uh, got the imagination of uh, the masses yes. so television ott and of course the celluloid and the box office success is something because of which uh, Alu Arjun is an iconic star. Absolutely, Girish. What a, a beautiful combination of uh, celluloid success, the uh, OTT, of course, and uh, you know, yeah. dub movies, Geeta. But the ultimate post-pandemic star, Alu Arjun, and uh, you know, we're literally the countdown to his movie Pushpa movie, yeah. Two is begun. Is is it called what the uh, the, the rise? Rule. The rule. First was the rise. First now was he's the rise ruling, which is truly what is he is now. The second is the rule. Yeah, and so I I spoke to someone recently, and he said that it's not a question whether it's going to hit a thousand crore in box office it's how much how far it's going to go after crossing a thousand crore i mean that's the kind of expectation on this movie but the uh, allu arjun phenomenon uh, geeta i mean like girish mentioned it's also about the south understanding what People. viewers wanted after the pandemic the larger than life uh, you know experience which right. is what stars like allu arjun gave them so uh, we were doing a story earlier also and that's we you know we've been speaking to a lot Surging of film south. industry yes. people and asking them about why the films were flopping and how the south indian films are managed yes. to connect all india right. and uh, um, i remember one of the people who the, somebody told us you know that how uh, bombay film industry was trying to become hollywood and yes. they were trying to be more hollywood and more true to life and all of yes. that and it's not as they didn't see success yes. but that massy success that Saurav talked about As, you know absolutely. you connected from the rickshaw wala to the top uh, from guy. the rickshaw wala to the you know uh, to the classy guys yes. in uh, you know in in, in uh, south mumbai and that's the range of uh, fan following that uh, you know uh, allu arjun has and uh, this is the reason for pushpa 2 pushpa the rise to become such an eagerly anticipated movie thank you very much for joining us this evening girish saurav and my colleague geeta datta pushpa to the rise is a movie that we will be tracking very closely streaming on news 9 plus news is now content subscribe and get free vouchers